Over the next few videos, we're going to be discussing a topic called power series. Now, let's start just by motivating the topic. Why, why do we want to talk about power series? And then very quickly, we'll get into the definition of a power series. But <clears throat> let's, let's actually start with um, talking about Taylor polynomials, which we've recently been discussing. And a Taylor polynomial is a polynomial of degree n that approximates any type of function, a trig function, an exponential function, it doesn't matter. For example, let's look at a cosine function. We did this example in a previous video. So if you have a cosine graph, if you find a Taylor polynomial of degree two, let's say a quadratic, it will approximate it well around wherever is centered. The one I've done is centered at zero. And so you notice around zero, my quadratic approximates the cosine graph very well around zero. But once you leave zero, like if you look out here, the approximation is not good anymore. But we realize that for these Taylor polynomials, if you increase the degree of your polynomial, if you tack on more terms, then the approximation becomes more accurate for longer. Uh, so for example, if you looked at a degree four Taylor polynomial, it would not only bend downwards at zero and be a good approximation around zero, but it would also bend back upwards as well. And, uh, and that's more accurate than our quadratic. Well, you know, we could ask a very natural question then, you know, what if we kept going, right? What if we, instead of degree four, we did a degree six or degree six, we did a degree eight. And then, you know, what if we kept going and kept going even beyond that? And with each increase in degree, you'll notice that the polynomial will bend a little more and bend a little more and bend a little more and wind up basically wrapping around the cosine graph and I've all right I've got one even even beyond that what if we kept going forever what if we added on basically infinitely many terms now by definition it would not be a polynomial anymore because a polynomial has a finite degree like degree 2 degree 4 degree 10 degree 100 but you know nevertheless I, I think we see with each increase in power the approximation gets better and better and better <clears throat> so this just opens up a whole world of questions for example if we go on for forever does the increase in amount of terms here as we increase these towards infinity does it wind up being exactly the same as the cosine function or is it still an approximation or can we even do that or you know it's just this whole world of questions that open up if you continue to add on term after term after term that's the idea of a power series and you notice we use the word series instead of the word polynomial because what is an infinite series an infinite series is when you add up infinitely many terms and now we have a lot of details to work out and a number of videos to cover all this. But again, in this video, I'm just giving you a light idea or introduction to what these power series are going to do. All right, so let's look at it algebraically. If this is your Taylor polynomial here, let's make some observations. Uh, if you look at a Taylor polynomial for one function versus the Taylor polynomial of another function, you notice that certain things change and certain things will never change. For example, look at these green terms right here. Doesn't matter what your function is, cosine like ours was, or sine, or e to the x, or square root of x, or whatever your function is, you notice that all of them have an x minus c, an x minus c squared, an x minus c cubed, so on and so forth. Those will never change. And the only things that will change are the things that depend on f, that depend on the function that's chosen. But where are your f's? Well, they seem to be the coefficients of these terms. So here, if you look in pink or purple, whatever that color is, we have f of c, f prime at c, f double prime at c, so on and so forth. These guys change depending on your function. So let, let's see what we can extrapolate from that. All right, so uh, if we, in addition, kept this going on for forever, what we would have is we would have a series, a series going from n equals 1 to infinity, because we're not going to stop at 10 or stop at 12 or stop at 100. We're going to keep going on for forever. The things that will not change is you'll always have an x minus c to the 
nth power, right? X minus C to a, a power that's changing depending on your index. Now, what do we do about these things that are changing? Well, they're going to change depending on your function and uh, the actual term will depend on which term you're at. If you're at the second term, it'll be one number. If you're at the fifth term, it might be a different number. So I'm going to just absorb all those together and just call it just a generic a sub n, a sub n. And that's just a, a number that depends on n, the number that depends on the term that you're at. And so we can equate these two guys together here. And this is what's known as a power series. This is what's known as a power series. It's an infinite series uh, that has X's in it, which is unlike when we were doing all those tests, the ratio test, the root test, all those type of tests. We didn't have variables in our series at that point, but now we do. And, uh, and believe it or not, this is actually a function of X, right? A function of X. So this will actually, <clears throat> in some capacity, wind up being your function right um, because this was designed to approximate the function but this actually winds up equaling the function and there's a lot of details i can't stress that enough i i'm going through this very quickly we, we need to talk <clears throat> more in depth about what it means to equal this series and things like that but just understand that as this approximation gets better and better and better it will wind up looking like <clears throat> the cosine function or the sine function or e to the x or what have you okay and uh, and so anyway this is just a, a, an idea of what a power series looks like now in practice most power series are centered at zero not at a generic C which is good that that makes our algebra a lot easier for example if it's centered at zero <clears throat> then we can actually write your infinite series as the sum n equals uh, actually zero to infinity of a sub n times x to the n, a sub n x to the n. And so this will wind up being a function of x. And it just slightly simplifies this back here. And I actually just realized I made a small typo earlier, forgive me. Uh, this should have started at zero as opposed to one because this first term right here doesn't have an x. So it should have been x to the zero, which would have just gave you your leading constant term here. So I apologize about that. That should have been a zero right there, not a one. But nevertheless, uh, this is what most of your power series will look like. It'll be a sum n equals zero to infinity, a sub n times x to the n. And these will be representations of well-known functions like e to the x or, or so on and so forth. They don't have to be, but they usually are. All right now pr probably our biggest issue going forward is um, all those tests that we just learned uh, a little while ago some time ago were uh, primarily concerned with what it was concerned with whether this infinite series converged or diverged which ones added up to a finite amount and which ones did not and now the series is not yet really complete until we've chosen an X. So once an X is decided, then you plug in that X and then we don't know the series might converge or it might diverge. And so what we have is this issue of the domain of this function, because if you plug in an X and the series converges, then that X is in the domain. If you plug in that X and it doesn't converge, then it's not in the domain of your function. So we have a lot of talking to do about convergence of these power series. But like I said, we'll cover that in another video. So anyway, hopefully this gives you just a, a, a somewhat of an idea of what power series are, what they're used for. Um, in short, they're used to or will be used eventually to represent functions with a series notation that's not an approximation, they'll actually be equal to these infinite series.